Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. You know who it is and what I'm going to ask you to press and why I will ask you to press it. I'll get straight to this message. Anger Man recorded, um, and it may not still be up anymore, but he recorded about uh, the dirty secret in black America that may contribute to the dysfunction. And what he pointed to was not um, intentional incest, but what he pointed to was uh, unintentional and accidental incest after emancipation, and sometimes even forced incest during bondage on breeding farms. That being said, um, my subscriber Dwight Hayes was uh, telling me, and I want to give a shout out to him again, about how a few years ago he, uh, and I, I misremembered it and said it was a nurse in other, place, other recordings, I referred back to it saying it was a nurse, but I read the comment later on, or recently, and uh, he, w he said it was a doctor actually, several years ago, that told him and somebody else in a conversation that the black population in the US is seeing more and more afflictions uh, that are associated with inbreeding and incest. But what I'm also gonna say is this, the symptoms of it, uh, the symptoms of both that and PTSD or PTSS, um, do describe us, lack of focus, irritability, um, poor decision making, um, easily forgetting information, uh, jumping to conclusions, impulsiveness. I'm gonna tell you that there's another group of people I've seen that have gone through this and that is the Arab Bedou. They are the same way, they are rough. Um, they are very hospitable and that's the good thing, but they're very rough. They do not um, value as a culture critical thinking. And granted, if you try to translate the word critical thinking into Arabic, um, the word critical would not come through as uh, necessary. You would have to say deep thinking or thinking with depth, thinking in depth. That would be the literal translation that um, they have in Arabic for the same concept. If you translate critical thinking from English to Arabic, it means thinking in such a way so as to criticize, nothing else. So I understand why they don't value the English translation directly into Arabic of critical thinking, but nobody's gonna look at them and say, oh, they have the right to not value thinking in depth. That's not okay, that's a problem. We have that same issue. Now, I looked at them and I said, well, wait a minute, they don't have the excuse that we black people have because they were never colonized. Don't get me wrong, in the Gulf nations, most of them were colonized, but in the interior of the peninsula, where the Bedou culture is the strongest, they were not colonized. So when other Bedou are ignorant and proud of it and just dumb and, and you know, mad niggerish in all the wrong ways, that's from a culture that stems from the center of the peninsula where the colonization was not effective. What does this tell you? Well, let me tell you one of the things about the Bedou that is so important, and that is origin. They value origin and breeding and pedigree so much that um, they oftentimes don't marry certain tribes. Now, there are tribes that are allowed to marry each other. That's fine. But the tribe has to be big and famous um, or rather I should say both people must come from tribes that are big and famous. You can't have somebody from a big and famous tribe marrying somebody from a known but small tribe. Um, so this does lead to a lot of them marrying their first cousins, not second, not third, not fourth, only first. And they have afflictions at a higher rate. Now on uh, a mental scale, they are almost never walking around with Down syndrome, retarded. 
but you do see a lesser intellect among even many of the normal ones. You don't find this among those that have lived in cities for a long time, but you will find this, you'll find this among the Bedou. The, the, the city dwellers know the Bedouins to be very close-minded and very stupid. And that's how they describe them. I describe them as being stubborn and pretending to be stupid. But the, the city dwellers who know them better than I do say, no, they're stupid. It's intentional, but they're stupid. Uh, and they're stubborn and their minds are closed. So they're on autopilot all the time. I've taught them. Where I teach now is a promotion, so I don't see it quite the same. But when I taught in um, where the majority of teachers taught every school year prior, prior to this one, yes, um, they were. I have talked to many rank and file people in the city where I live, and I ask them certain things and they don't answer. I've even teased my wife at times because she may call me and I'll say yes, and then she'll call me again instead of telling me what she needed to tell me. Or she'll call me and I'll say yes, and then she doesn't tell me what she was going to say, and i got to remind her. I've teased her about that because she actually grew up in uh, a neighboring nation and they weren't quite as Bedouin as backwards, but back then at that time, they were not much better. So I tease her at times. You understand why, and, but she's not really that way. She's definitely smarter than they are. However, I'm saying this to say that I have seen the people who did not go through colonization act the same way that we have, but what is the one thing that they have in common? They intentionally uh, only marry first cousins. Now, brothers and sisters, no, that's not happening. Aunts and nephews, uncles and nieces, that's not going on either. But, um, and if, if something like that did happen, they would usually not carry the baby to term. They wouldn't do it. Something like that would go on, they would just simply, uh, They'll fly out somewhere to do an abortion. Uh, they'll find a way, but they ain't gonna carry that baby to term. But first cousins, yeah, that's okay. I mean, they get married. And here's the other thing that happens. It's, and, and there are people who have descended from this for eight and nine and 13 generations in a row. Because that's the easiest way for people to get married, especially outside of the major cities. Now, do you understand? Irritability. Quick to fight with each other over small things. Not retaining information. Not being careful about what they say and what they repeat. Um, difficulty giving them any new information. Xenophilia, meaning they're actually quite fond of foreigners to a certain extent, but they'll make fun of them as well. They have almost the same relationship with, with people that are different from them that African Americans have. It's like we look up to them, but then we make fun of them at the same time. Man, the Chinese got that stuff together, but then we make jokes about their language, and we don't want to do what they do to get ahead. It's the same thing with them. They look at us foreigners, and they kind of look up to us, but by the same token, they don't want to do what we do to get ahead. Like, I don't know, crack a book and study, remember something, repeat information enough times. They do memorization, but that's when they're cheating for a test. They want to have the answers and the questions to the test before the test. And then they'll memorize that, but they don't actually do any in-depth thinking. And the ones who do get ostracized by the ones who don't like they're foolish, like they're stupid, and they wind up moving ahead in life, and the same ones that ostracize them come back to them later on and want some help. They grow up in their 30s, finally, and say, I need to get my life together. It's the same thing. And we don't have colonization and slavery in common, but what do we have in common? For us, it's been accidental and forced for them has been completely unforced, voluntary, and knowingly. And yet, let me tell you this too, Angry Man was on to something because we are better at these things at which we are bad than they are. We will retain more information than they will. They are less irritable than we are, but we are um, 
Both of them, both of us suffer from pretty much same types of violence. I remember in a neighborhood uh, in which I would be safe walking around at night, although it was not a high income neighborhood, but I remember walking through it. And one day there were a bunch of cars parked outside of the house. They were there consoling the widow because her husband had been shot to death by another man from the same neighborhood and they were related. But, the, but they got into an argument and one man went and got his shotgun, went back and shot the other man and killed him. And they were, they were from the same neighborhood. They were neighbors, just one argument. And you know how niggas are. Well, that's how these uh, Arabian niggas are. They get to arguing and nobody listens to the other. They don't even, all thinking goes out the window. And if you can't out talk the other person, you just kill them. What does that tell you? I'm saying this to say that Angry Man was on to something. Our brains are damaged from the trauma and maybe sometimes from accidental inbreeding. But in either case, we're dealing with some minor damage to the brain, but it's still there and it does make a difference and we need help and we need to change the culture. And these people, just like us, they do not take help and they will not change the culture even when they're wrong. And we will not change our culture even when we're wrong. We're still better than them for one reason and I'll tell you why. We're more willing to discuss it. You have Angry Man on YouTube talking about this and telling black folks to confront it. You don't have that here. So we have a chance actually to improve ourselves before others do. We're looking up to them and they really ain't much better than we are. We have a chance to become the ones to whom others will look up to. And if they don't, so what? But they better if they want to improve themselves. We have a chance to actually be the role model for self-improvement for other oppressed and downtrodden peoples. And I don't really care if they take the example or not. I only care that we provide this example and blaze the trail, whether they come along the trail later on or, or rather they don't do it. I simply care that we blaze and carve out and cut that trail. Because what will really happen is that other black folks who are downtrodden and oppressed will follow that. That's what I really care about. Now, I wanna say one thing. One of the things that we black folks are gonna to have to do and be very careful about doing and very, take very seriously is we're going to have to um, give ourselves time to think. And that is whether you buy earplugs so that on the commute home to work, you don't hear a lot of stuff, a lot of distraction. It, it, you, which it's, it's something whether you just, you take quiet time during the weekend. We're going to have to give ourselves time to think and becoming a single parent will undo that. You can't have that. If you become a single parent, you will not have time to think. So I'm talking about to the men and to the women, avoid it. I became, I wouldn't even a single parent. I just had my first daughter, not my first child, but I had my first daughter with the wrong woman. And we were broke and I didn't have time to think and I couldn't make good decisions anymore. And she wouldn't make them. But I'm gonna say this, this and black men are gonna take this advice much more than black women are. Black men, give yourselves some quiet time at least about two times a week. Really, you should do with three. So that you can think more clearly about whatever issues you are facing and stop undersleeping. We black folk love to go to bed late and we got to get up early the next day for work. And we ain't fully functional. We need to stop. We need to change that up. We black folks, we need to start going to bed whatever time it takes to be able to get up early in the morning and be alert when you do. Because then you, you can actually think more clearly when things are quiet and when they're loud. Now, if you're sleep deprived, you can, you, as soon as things get quiet and you're comfortable, you fall back asleep because your body needs it. But if we start changing what we do and just trying to go to bed at earlier times, put your phone on, do not disturb at a certain hour, to, uh, about an hour before you would need to go to bed. You can play on the phone, but put it on, do not disturb, get rid of the noise. Relax, go to bed early. Because we are dealing with a situation that, in which we're falling behind simply because most of the time we just, it's not the only reason, it's always the interference of the white man and don't ever underestimate that. Greenville, Oklahoma, next to Tulsa, is only one out of 19 examples of that. 
that will happen. But in the meantime, outside of that, you need to understand that we are people who are so swamped with problems, we don't even have much time to think, and we don't give ourselves the time that we do have. So what does that, what does that lead to? A lot of times our coping mechanisms are partying, but that takes energy and time. Instead of understanding that a better coping, is, a better coping mechanism is rest, which will actually make you sharper, stronger physically and mentally. And I'm gonna give an example of what it will do before I go to this meeting to which I have to be, in which I must be present later on. You retain information better. When you read, read more carefully. That's the other thing. You'll be able to do that easily if you've gotten enough rest. We hate to read because reading takes focus. The Bedouins hate to read because reading takes focus. Angry Man was right about that. But we have another problem. Now we start to read a little bit, but not enough. So we read a few subtitles, a few memes, and that's all, and we get our knowledge from that. We are crazy niggas. We got pe people running around here thinking that the original black man didn't ejaculate sperm and semen, but he instead ejaculated clean water. We got people running around believing that the first people were only women, and that men were some, some sort of uh, evolutionary offshoot later on, and that um, uh, the first men were completely asexual, except at women's commands. That is not the way it works. And we got people dumb enough to believe this. You look at every other species that comes in two genders and what happens? Some of us actually believe that, 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 that there, at one time there were black women and no men and the black women were having babies with no help from men and that men were evolu evolutionary offshoot. I actually heard a woman African-American talking this black to Africa stuff but she was getting it all wrong. I'm a pan-Africanist. And she was getting it wrong. Making, pretty much censuring men for having a sexual appetite for women. Man, bitch, get the fuck out of here. We don't need you in our community with that stuff. You want to castrate black men just like white men do. Mad because we actually would prefer to bust raw bareback nuts inside of a vagina. You, you got a problem with that. Well, then you got a problem with God. Same God that made you nappy-headed, which you're proud of and, and should be, is a God that made human beings of two genders that are mutually attracted to each other. But you got issues with that, because every man ain't rich and muscular. I mean, that's exactly what, that, that is feminism going wild, but with a pan-African twist to it. We're believing all kinds of ignorant misconceptions about that and beyond that, because we're not we don't have time to think. And this is why it is that when I hear someone say something and they, they seem kind of intellectual, but I know it's, it's not right. I understand that they may actually believe it, but I can tell when it's wrong at times in, within milliseconds. It's not because I'm just super smart. It's simple. I've had time to think. I've given myself time to think. And I don't overburden myself with a whole lot of noise all the time when I do have free time. And one of the things that's happened is that lately I've, be, I've started going to bed much earlier and I've been getting up much earlier and I'm sharp and I'm more alert. Uh, about a half hour after I've awakened. This is one of the things that's happened. And I've begun to understand how, how uh, the lifestyle has affected other people's ability to think. It's like they don't think at all. Like you, they just idiots. And why? Because niggas got to party and niggas got to stay up late and niggas can't read and niggas can't focus and can't pay attention and can't retain information because they just don't want to really. When in fact, really, the ability to do so it mainly stems from our lifestyle. It's not evil, it's just trifling. And I'm seeing it over here with these folks too. And it dawned on me when I was listening to Angry Man, and now I'm gonna tell you this. Some of the things it's led to. Unfortunately, um, that is a major reason why it, uh, the, the genders are arguing with each other right now. See, I didn't know this, but the Bedouin were also suffering uh, from f the effects of feminism without the feminist movement. They would not tolerate a feminist movement, but they're still suffering from the effects of a type. Of, the effects of it. What do I mean? This proceeded. Uh, this preceded actually the feminist movement. See, this is what happened. Dowries became expensive. The women never stopped and said, you know what, if our dowries are too damn expensive, maybe we should lower the dowry so that we'd have more money to start our lives together as a couple in less debt. No, they didn't think about that. And the fathers of daughters didn't think about that. 
The fathers of daughters will look at the daughters and say, well, if you're willing to marry this guy for only that much, trying to make it easy on him, I'm going to raise the dowry to something that's hard for him because of our family honor. And the men said, well, damn, we're not going to be able to afford to get married. So now, what do, you, what do you have? You have a scenario where when the men want to get married, they can't marry from abroad. It's not that easy. I mean, legally they can, but it's not that easy. The families don't like it, especially if they're Bedouin. And they can't marry from the same, the same nationality but a different tribe if the tribes did not get along in the past. And so marriage is very expensive, and these husbands start off their new married lives in debt. Now, these women... Oftentimes, they're, they're different in what they want, but the women do want expensive stuff, and they want expensive weddings. And if she doesn't want that, the family steps in. Her family steps in and says, well, we're going to raise it. We're not going to tell them what your figure that you gave. No, even though it's your right, we're going to raise that because, you know what, we want some of that money, too. We want enough to split. Islamically, you can't sell your daughter in marriage. That's forbidden. She sets the dowry. It's up to her. They don't understand that, and they don't want to know that. Do you see where this is going? So the very structure of the family life is already under stress and strain due to the debt and the high materialism. You think their families are so together? Not necessarily. I mean, it's not as, as, as good of a situation as what many of you think. I want you to realize that. I want you to get... Uh, get out of the idea that we, to which we've been subjected that everybody's more together than we are. First off, I want that to stop. But I do want us to understand, too, that um, we can learn, actually, from other people's mistakes. Now, some of us think that, you know, every immigrant gets some kind of subsidy, subsidy from the government just to be in a better position than black people. No, the system is set up that way, but it's not set up to where they get a subsidy. What it is set up for is that they do get some help. There's some low interest or no interest loans that they can get. But what also happens is this. Did you know that they can start a business off in a black, a poor black neighborhood more easily? What is the reason for that? So that they have to prove themselves by being willing to oppress us. That's why. They don't come here with just coming to the U.S. Uh, with money. That's not the way that works. They can get a bit of a loan and not have to pay back as much interest. That can happen. The communities, because of this program set up for so long, um, have been able to do this. But in actuality, only, the only community that at one point had this ability, I think, was the Hmong community. And that, that was a short-lived program where they were just getting some uh, free financial aid to start businesses. And that had more to do with them helping the U.S. in the Vietnam War effort than it had, uh, than it had to do with um, anything else. But now, of course, they weren't willing to really oppress black people. We were different from them, they were different from us, but they weren't really willing to oppress us. Even the Viet Cong did not really want to fight with black people, believe it or not. That's one of the things that you can ask a black veteran about from the Vietnam War, and they'll tell you a lot of them saw the reluctance of the Viet Cong to engage with African Americans, not out of fear, but simply because they knew that African Americans were being drafted into the U.S. Army and were only there because they had to be, and so they didn't see them as willing invaders. They would broadcast things like, soul brother, not your war. And so consequently, even though I am quick to tell you about the... Uh, the, the ways in which other people may look down on us, I also want you to understand that everybody that ain't black, uh, everybody that, that's light-skinned with straight hair is not automatically the enemy. It really does depend on nationality and region. But I also wanted you to understand that we've been, we don't know about this because we're very, very subject to misinformation. And the more, we, uh, we hate nuance, that's the thing. We can't stand nuance, but it's necessary. We're trying to solve one of the world's most complex problems, our own oppression, with no nuance. Dumb niggas. Give yourselves time to think and sleep. And know that everybody else ain't got all that stuff together. And then let me know what the results are. If not, let somebody else know. I hope this has been a benefit. Salam alaikum.